Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about reflection in programming and I want to investigate if it is as bad as everybody is saying. Reflection is a metaprogramming feature that many programming languages support with which you can write code that inspects other code in the same system or even itself and it sometimes has the ability to modify the behavior of that code during runtime. Really early in my programming adventures, I remember using a library that at some point had a private read-only field that had no setter, but I really needed its value to change during runtime. I can't even remember why. After a lot of googling, I discovered that using the type that the field lived in, and through some very complicated for me at the time syntax, I was able to set the value of the field using the field's name as a string. This blew my mind. The fact that I had the power to edit things that I wasn't supposed to be really editing was very empowering. Little did I know that at that time I made my first reflection mistake. Reflection as a feature works differently from language to language, and the level of support for reflection varies. For the sake of this video I will only be focusing in detail on how reflection works in C-sharp but the main idea behind it should be true for the majority of other reflective languages, for example like Java or Kotlin. What usually changes are the limitations or the exact implementation of how it works under the hood. You might have heard the phrase, don't use reflection, reflection is very very slow. This is usually the argument that you will hear, especially from people that have been coding in that language for several years. This however, in my humble opinion, not only isn't completely true, but it's not even the reason why you probably should stay away from reflection. First, let's try answering the very simple question, is reflection slow? Well, the short answer is yes and no. In order for me to be able to explain that, I need to run some benchmarks. Benchmarks never lie. For the purpose of this benchmark, I will be using c -sharp and the benchmarking package benchmark.net. This package will take care of all the data and metrics collection for the benchmarks that I will run and will produce very accurate performance results. The test will be run against this person class. This class contains a single property called full name. A property in C-Sharp is just syntactic sugar around encapsulation. More specifically, this line behind the scenes will produce a private field and two methods, a public getter and a private setter. Our goal with this benchmark is to set the value of the property using reflection, since the setter is private. First, just so we can have a point of reference, I will create a public set full name method, which I will use in a non-reflection benchmark in order to know how long it would take to normally set the field. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark and see how long it takes for our system to set the text and return the value without the use of reflection. So as we can see here, the benchmark finished and the mean execution time is around 1.5 nanoseconds. This is extremely fast. One millisecond consists of one million nanoseconds. Now we'll create a second benchmark method and I will use the get property method of the type itself to get the property info that I want to modify. And then I'm going to call the set value method. By providing the class instance and the value that I want, I'm able to set the value using reflection. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark. So as you can see, the mean execution time is around 200 nanoseconds. This is by no means slow, but it is around 150 times slower than the non-reflection one. This, even though we're talking about very, very small time spans, is a significant slowdown. Let's try to optimize this. My first thought is that we don't actually need to get the property info on every single execution of our benchmark. We can simply cache it since it won't change during runtime and we can use it from the cache. For the purposes of this video, I will extract it into a static field so it's reused on every execution. Let's just run the benchmark now. As you can see, this made the execution around 25% faster and dropped the mean execution down from 200 nanoseconds to 150 nanoseconds. This, however, can still be considered significantly slower than the actual execution. Can we speed it up even further? Like I said earlier in the video, a property is really just two methods, a getter and a setter, and a field. By using Rider's IL viewer, I'm able to take a look at the IL that our class will be compiling to. IL, or Intermediate Language, 
is the instructions that the CLR, or Common Language Runtime, will execute to run our code. So as we can see, we have a getter and a setter, and they both point to a private backing field. This field can be accessed using reflection since it exists and it has a name even though it looks a bit weird. So we're going to do that. Using the getProperty method will give us access to the method that will call a method to set the field even though it's confusing. What if we could skip this and directly set the field value? Would that speed up execution? Let's run the benchmarks. Interestingly enough, this had a 75% improvement than the original property value setting, with a mean execution time of 55 nanoseconds. At this point, our fastest approach is around 36 times slower than regular value setting. And I know what you're thinking. I'm gonna say it. Can we go even faster? Well, long story short, yes, we can. We can actually go significantly faster. By using the create delegate method of the delegate class, we can create a delegate that points to the setter method of the property info. The drawback of this is the need of having access to the concrete type in compile time. In this specific scenario though, we do, so we can just use it. Here's how the implementation looks like. Running this benchmark creates remarkable results. With a mean execution time of 3.5 nanoseconds, this use of reflection is only two and a half times slower than the normal execution. The funny thing is that there are still two options that can potentially optimize this even further. But I think I proved my point, and because these other methods involved a meeting angle code, which makes them impossible to read, I will just leave them outside of this video. So as you can see, reflection isn't necessarily slow, and in fact, it can actually be pretty fast, very close to the normal execution, at least in c -sharp. Even the non-optimized approach is running in a fraction of a microsecond. The danger with reflection's performance is potentially death by a thousand cuts. You see, if you only need to use it in one location, it's probably not a big deal performance-wise. I highly doubt that it will be your performance bottleneck. However, if you keep using it all over the place, these microseconds will add up and you really don't want to get them add up to milliseconds because then they're really visible. The real concerns of using reflection are not around performance, they're really around maintainability. Firstly, Code that is using reflection is almost never easily readable. Something that is hard to read is also hard to modify. Especially the last implementation is really hard to read and it requires the reader to know about classes that they really should not be knowing. The delegate class is not something you know that even exists in C -sharp. Code that is hard to read and modify is dangerous, even when unit tests cover it. Secondly, code that is violating access keywords and encapsulation is dangerous. Almost always, when a library is hiding something from you or doesn't allow you to modify it, it's doing it for a reason. Access keywords and encapsulation are there for a very, very specific purpose, and using reflection to violate them can cause unintended effects. I would highly recommend against setting values and only using reflection to get values. This, however, can still be dangerous. Lastly, using constant strings to point to a method or field names is extremely dangerous, especially if they're internal or private. If you're using version 1.2.0 of a package, and as part of your application's flow, you are using reflection to modify something within that library's code that is out of bounds, nothing guarantees that the developer won't remove it in version 1.2.1. Only public methods are part of the contract between you and the library owner, and they need to be maintained for compatibility purposes. Anything outside that is not. Anything that's private or internal can change without you knowing with the potential of breaking your system. So does this mean that reflection shouldn't be used? Of course not. Like anything in programming, reflection is just another tool. The problem is that it's an insanely powerful one. Like a great philosopher once said, with great power comes great responsibility. One of my favorite reflection usages is to scan my assemblies during application startup in order to find interfaces and classes that implement them and automatically register them in my dependency injection container. This is safe because I almost always own the classes that I'm scanning and it doesn't affect my application's performance since it's not part of the main flow and it only happens during startup. To recap, reflection nowadays isn't really slow and can be pretty pretty damn fast, but there are concerns around it that might disqualify it from being a viable solution to a specific problem. 
That's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding.